from Aqua Mermaid and today I'm sharing with you a part of our mermaid history. Yes, some performers that were performing in an underwater theater. This is in St. Marco, Texas, a city close to Austin. An underwater theater where there was shows. It started in the 50s up to the 90s and this amazing infrastructure was put underwater for people to watch. I had the chance to interview one of the original Aquamates that was in the show and also one of the divers that were their assistant and now you know what they are a married couple then that's a good story and I want to share with you all their secrets or their techniques what they were doing back in the time that we can still use and they were really nice really entertaining and amazing performer on the walk. The Aquarina Park was like the first kind of Disneyland it was really a big attraction in the time and there was a lot of things related to the water because of these beautiful natural resources they had. Tons of activities for the family to go and if you ask anybody who went to this park, you will see the sparkle in their eyes. It was something special and I want you to either remember or discover this place from our past. Let's start the interview! My name is Carrie Deal and I was a former performer at Ocarina Springs, probably around 1989. 90, 91, I think it was. And that's where I met my husband, Randy. I was also a performer, but different you... roles. Yeah, she was a mermaid. They would do these uh, underwater ballerina performances. My only job really was to sit at the bottom of the tank and then in between her sequences, I would pop up every three minutes or so and give her some air. But it was my, how we met, it was my first day. I'd just been trained on this and I, I got down to the bottom and I kind of got distracted with some things that were going on down there and I sort of forgot about her. And then I looked up and she was literally swimming towards me to to, uh, get, to get air. I popped up and here you there and she just <laughs> flowed back, right After back into hyper it. Hyperventilating, yeah. When you get a breath from that um, compressed air, you have to be able to stabilize yourself. And this was the part where we, we grew legs. We came out after the mermaid uh, sequence. So you do your sequence and everything and you, you end up like this and your hand goes out for the hose. And I kept waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and it was just, um, I turned around and he is all the way at the bottom in his own little world looking at a, what was it, freshwater prawn, I think, yeah. <laughs> so we get to the first uh, underwater stage and that's when he was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's my first day and I was like, it's okay. He's like, my name's Randy, you know, and that's how we met. It was an underwater submarine theater, and this was at Ocarina Springs there in San Marcos, Texas. Yeah, so we, it would start above the water, and as the announcers going through the story, and guys like me would, you know, kind of be using hand gestures during the story, it, the submarine would start going below the water. And then once it got submerged, we had a pig that would jump into the water and then we would, with a bottle of milk, we would swim backwards and, and direct the pig to follow. It was Ralph the Swimming Pig. And that was, uh, for whatever reason, that was a, a really big draw for people. Yeah, as the story, you know, they talked about the mermaids and everything and the story went ahead, we would have an underwater picnic. So we had food and a drink in this little bag. And it was a Coke bottle filled with, it was sugar-free grape Kool-Aid. So it kind of looked dark like Coke. And you would just kind of um, put some air in that bottle and the, the Kool-Aid would come into your mouth. And so you could finish the whole entire thing and then you fill it up with a little bit of air from your hose and kind of toss it around and play with it and everything would go up and come back down. So it was really cool. And so then we would feed the fish with the, the food that we got. I think it was honeydew melon that we would get from the kitchen. The night before each show, we would take moist stock food and just scoop them into balls and freeze them. That's what we fed the fish with. So all kinds of fish. It was like they were trained on cues. You'd pull out this ball of dog food and go like this and all these fish would just go yeah, I mean like hundreds of fish. Yeah, it was incredible. I remember trying to just get used to that hose. I remember Julie trained me and um, I couldn't do it that first day. And she goes, it's okay. 
you're gonna think about it, you're gonna sleep on it, and tomorrow you'll be good to go, and that's exactly what happened. Overnight, literally, since it's such compressed air, you've gotta really expand your lungs for it. So you can't really just breathe in it, you've gotta let the air naturally just go into your lungs. For the sequences, you have to train for that. Um, you have to know exactly the formations and, and what to do and how long you're holding each move and stuff like that. Ours was a little different. We we didn't look like clowns, but we acted like clowns for the first part of the show. We did all this stuff interacting with the with the people, and then um, then I just dropped down to the bottom and let them do their thing. And an underwater pipe, they'd fill it up with powdered milk. When you brought it in uh, to your mouth and blew it out, it looked like smoke. Yeah, I was a competitive swimmer, but really, you didn't need to know any of that in order to do this job. Really, I mean. Yeah, they just train you on how to. They train you on how to hold your air when you release um, the ballet sequences. I saw the show for the first time when I was about 10 and we lived in New Orleans. And so we would vacation there for two weeks every summer. I remember just sitting there and watching all the performers. At the time there was, a, I think his name was Glurpo, there was a clown. Mm -hmm. And he came to the window and he tapped at the window, started pointing at me, telling me to come here. He wanted to give me a kiss and I was like, had this big fever blister on my lap and I was so embarrassed. And my mom was like, go give him a kiss, Gary. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm so embarrassed. But I remember telling my mom that that's what I wanna be when I grow up as a mermaid. So then I ended up going to Southwest Texas State University and finding this, that job and it was the best job I ever had. I mean, it was, even though you're taking full you know, loads of work at, at school, it just fit really nicely. You know, I grew up in Texas. I, I, I'm surprised that I never knew about Ocarina Springs until I got there. I just needed a job. And so I got a job as a glass bottom boat driver. You know, that was fun because the water there is just crystal clear. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, an awesome place. One day I was looking over at the at the swimming theater and and this girl, Carrie, came walking down in her little Indian costume and I looked at my friend and I went, who's that? And he said, oh, that's Carrie Chadwick. She's crazy. So the next day I asked my manager if I could become a swimmer. Eventually I got I got into that part of it, but it, it wasn't until I was in there and, and in the environment and swimming that I just realized how incredible it was. It was just a unique experience. I mean, even after we left, I had dreams mm -hmm. of swimming and dreams of being under that water. It was, it was really kind of a magical place. It, it, well, it's 72 degrees year round. So we would perform in the summer we perform in the winter but the water was always the same and you know you could we we had masks for uh for our part of it but they would take theirs off for certain parts of the show but you can still see going up to the window and interacting with the kids inside that was a lot of fun and once you got really comfortable with being able to be at any part you know of the the arena that you wanted it was just like floating it is it's a it's a whole nother world it was very peaceful very relaxing and and it's funny because when you get down there if you're wearing your mask and you can look around at all the other swimmers everybody's just doing their own thing in their own little world you know that's on days that we would have to clean or if we were practicing or whatever um, it was just very tranquil the one everybody liked was I don't know what you called it, you know, when you would like swim backwards. And yeah. <laughs> your knee was up on your leg and everything and you'd arch your, you just go in a kind of a back circle. Yeah. So, and then into all these other different movements and everything. I think the ladies did make in the beginning their own costumes and beaded the little strings and things like that. So by the time we were there, there was an array to choose from. Recommendations for anyone who would like to do anything like that would be to seek out the places that still employ people to do. Just to get involved in some kind of program where you can learn to relax and and not uh, not feel like you're underwater. Once you get there, it's just it's just so much fun because you really are in a different world. This is the jacket that we would wear um, on cold days, and I found a bunch of. Let's see, ticket stubs, not too long ago in the pocket. Ocarina Springs, Submarine Theater. And then this was um, a sweatshirt that we would wear. It just says, um, underwater performer, Ocarina Springs. 
and so it's been what 25 years now thanks for having us we we, yeah. uh, we love talking about this place it's such a big part of our history and a lot of others it's just it was a you know it was a wonderful place and, and a lot and a fun job to have being able to swim and breathe underwater yeah and once a mermaid always a mermaid <laughs> <laughs> Now you can still go visit the spring there. Water is crystal clear. The river of San Marcos is fantastic. The entire city is under the mermaid theme, but the theater has been removed, as you've seen. Uh, in 90, 1994, the University of Texas bought it and wanted to bring it back to his natural state to make sure we preserve this beautiful place. Uh, but I invite you to go to the San Marcos Mermaid Festival happening once a year. There's a mermaid ball. I made a full video because I went last year and it was a fantastic experience experience to swim in that beautiful water. Then I will put the link in the description below. Give me a thumbs up and let me know, do you know other original performers from those times that were performing and have some things to share with us? Let me know in the comment below and maybe I can interview them. Take care and I see you soon. Bye. Mm-hmm.